What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's been a couple weeks since me and Tuck have been able to get out here and show you how the gardens are doing. So today, we're super excited to bring you along for a full garden tour. Let's go! Let's start things off in the heart of the food forest. This is one of my favorite spots right here, right in the center of everything. And these raised beds we put in a number of years ago and the amount of food they pumped out is just insane. So right here we've got a bunch of radishes and with our square foot gardening, we like to plant about 16 radishes per, per square foot. So you'll notice we have four rows of four. These should start producing pretty soon, so close, and we're gonna be excited to be eating those. And then all these locations that I have radishes planted in, this is where our peppers are gonna go. So we're getting that double yield. Over here, we've got some carrots that are looking just beautiful too. Same spacing, about 16 per square foot, you'll notice, looking really nice. But one thing you need to do with your carrots, same with your uh, lettuces, is make sure you stagger your plantings. This is like huge. So if you come over here, you notice we'll have some carrots that are just about two weeks behind the other ones. This way we can continually be harvesting those carrots. But you'll notice there's a, I planted about three carrot seeds in each location. What I like to do at this stage is go around and just thin them to choose the best carrot, just like that. Just so it has no competition. And these little pruners work amazing for that. So I love it. You'll notice Tuck is really getting up here. He's looking for a snack at some point. We'll have to grab him a radish that's ready in a different bed in a little while. But lettuces looking fantastic so happy about that spinaches we're eating some of these so this is a pretty delicious variety one thing i'm definitely doing different is i'm not going to be planting any of the bok choy in the spring because it just seems like it flowers a little too early so i'm going to save that for the fall in the future so these beds are doing great and the other bed right behind me is uh is a little further along with some of the plants like some of these lettuces, we'll be grabbing these soon to harvest. Beautiful colors. This right here is a solar flare lettuce. Really beautiful color on that. You can see a little bit of the overspray from the kale and clay, but that's just clay. All I have to do is just wash that off if I want. And then some of the other lettuces in here and stuff are doing great, but we gotta start moving on from these beds because we've got so much stuff to show. We've got fruits, veggies, just everything's starting to come together. That's why I love this time of year so much. Spring is, is my favorite time. Right here, we've got the white currants and these things you can see as you come close, they're starting to actually put on their currants, which is exciting. Soon we'll be getting, going to be harvesting just massive amounts of these white currants. This is my favorite kind of currant too. I love the flavor so much. Absolutely delicious. Tuck's almost trying to bite at these looking for a snack. We might have to take them to a, an asparagus earlier than I thought. So let me, let me grab an asparagus real quick because he just wants to show everyone uh, how he loves to snack on stuff in the garden. One thing I want to mention too is if you guys want to grab a, some of the merch, the spring merch, it's um, it's like there's only a few days left to get it. So if you want to get it, get it soon because it's about to be out for good. Never again. So uh, let me grab one of these asparagus for Tuck. Hey Tuck, you want a snack boy? Look at him come running over. He's a cute guy. He's just gonna come running over. He knows what he's about to get. He knows what time it is. So we'll let him find his own and snack on one of those. He's just hilarious, this guy. So we've got a couple more weeks that we're actually gonna be harvesting some of these asparagus. This bed doesn't do as well as some of my other beds, but we still get a good amount of fruit from, food from it. Let me take you over to the grapes now, which are really, have woken up and are just doing fantastic. Come on, Tuck, save some for the rest of everybody else, boy. Come on, come on, boy. Save some for somebody else, let's go. This guy's got an absolute mind of his own. <laughs> He just loves being on film so much. This is like, he, he, he loves it. So put some hearts down in the comment, hit the subscribe button if you'd love seeing Tuck in the videos. This isn't anything staged or, I mean, he just loves being in the videos. He loves being a part of the garden because he's just one of the wolf pack. We have so much fun with him out here. We try to appreciate all the time we get to have. So let's move over to these grapes. And I've got high hopes for the grapes this year because I'm doing things a little differently than I have in the past. One thing I'm doing is I'm going around and thinning some of my grapes, even when they're young. So I'll see if I can find a location where the grapes will sometimes put out two buds in one location. Here's a spot right here. So come up to me here. And at first get an overview of the shot of how the grapes look. So this isn't the best way to grow grapes, but this is how I love doing it because just, you'll see it later in the summer, we'll be able to walk underneath, the grapes will be hanging down, knocking us in the face. It's just, it's so fun to be, do it like this, even though it makes it a little harder. But let me show you right here. This is what we're doing this year. So notice how this grape has two buds coming right out of it. In the past, I would leave that, they would grow too close together and then that caused a lot of issues because they're not getting enough light or airflow. So this year I'm just going around and 
popping off all the extra buds. And you'll notice we've got a lot better spacing. So that's gonna increase airflow, increase light, and then just reduce the chances of any kind of pests and stuff. I got, <laughs> I got to show you the greenhouse. I'll, I, the greenhouse looks insane. This is just like a classic thing that I do that if I need like 50 plants, I'll plant like 200. And I don't even need 50 plants. Look at the amount of, <laughs> look at the amount of tomatoes and everything growing in here. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. We've got our cucumbers and our squash, everything in the back. So we're a, a couple weeks away from actually putting our stuff in because it's been such a late spring this year. So I'm just starting to actually harden off some of my tomatoes. And then probably in about a week or two, two weeks, I'll get my tomatoes into the ground. I really don't want to plant them too early, even though I have some extra if we have some issues. <laughs> I got so many other things to show you though. Just look right behind you. I mean, everywhere you look at this garden, but this is the Akani apple, absolutely loaded with apples on it. And you notice I'm trying to do a really good job of spraying it with the kaolin clay, but I'm also doing uh, a good amount of thinning. So if you'll notice like right here, a lot of these clusters had like five or six apples. I'm thinning them down to one or two apples because we want this tree to produce a, uh, you know, a good amount of amazing fruit. If we try to leave all the apples on this tree, it's just gonna produce no apples. It's gonna try to get every single apple and it's just not gonna work out like that. It wants to produce more than it actually can, so we have to guide the tree to make sure it doesn't do that. Right here, we've got the gooseberry. This thing's got some uh, gooseberries on it too. Same like family as the currants, basically, but these things get a lot bigger, these gooseberries. They look like little basketballs when they're ready and they're just packed with flavor. So that's a really good one too. Let me take you over to the to the raspberries now. These are the full gold raspberries. Uh, yellow raspberries are my favorite ones. This is the full gold here. And I think I actually have some yellow and mixed in. But regardless, both of them are full raspberries. But you'll see here how I like to prune them is I prune these things so they're ever bearing. Fall raspberries can either produce twice, once in the summer and then once later in the season, like going towards the fall, or you can just get the one big fall harvest. I chose to go with the double harvest because uh, the early harvest seems to do good in my location. Next, I want to show you some of these blackberries and the amount of flowers that these things have on it is just insane and it's just going to be so productive, so much fruit. One of the reasons is because of the way that I actually pruned it. So what you'll notice is blackberries, most of their fruit is going to be on the lateral branches. So what I did is I pruned the whole thing so it's basically all laterals. Here's that main stem going up here and then I just encourage all those lateral branches so it's just, we're talking fruit everywhere. I'm gonna have to do something because this thing's gonna be weighed down. I was thinking like it'd be funny if I, if I weighed it down like that and then had like a little alley that I can go underneath and just grab all the blackberries. I thought that would be pretty funny. Next, I wanna show you some of the peas in here. And this is a good evidence of the idea of microclimates. So we're up against this white fence in this corner that gets very little wind. So the peas have just blown up in here. They're growing so well and uh, we're already starting to get some flowers on them. One thing you'll notice is they're knocked down a little bit. That's in combination of two things. One is the wind has been like terrible this uh, spring. It's so windy and it's been cool. It almost feels like the spring is like a couple weeks behind or something, but that's all right. The wind's been crazy. The other thing is we've had in the past, the birds will go nuts on this and they didn't seem to bother anything much this year or any of my peas until like May 1st. Once May 1st came, they started just going nuts on them. And here's a little evidence of what, what the birds actually do to the peas. So this is one I didn't have covered. Look how much they just decimated this thing. And this was only like half a day. I came out and noticed and they just destroyed it. So that's why I have these covers built for the peas. And it looks like these peas over here are doing fantastic as well. We're gonna be getting good production out of those. So it's one of those ideas where it's like, when it comes to gardening, dealing with problems and managing problems is tough and annoying. That's why we have to do our best to avoid the issue in the first place. I'll bring you to another spot where we're working for that avoidance too. But here's one of our young pluots. We just put this in this year, showing good growth. I'm gonna go around and thin some of these young branches off while they're small, just to help build the structure of the tree and take off the young branches so I don't have to take them off in the future. Here's our apple. Look how beautiful this is looking with the right shape. You can tell that this is just gonna be a good, healthy tree because it's got the right structure when it's young. It's kind of funny how taking things out, like uh, pruning and stuff, can actually lead to higher fruit production. So it's counterintuitive, but it's one of the fun things about gardening. Next, we've got something to show that, you know, isn't the best news. 
you'll notice as you come around here, we see some cherries, but by now this thing should be loaded with cherries. You should see way more, more than are actually on here. The reason for that is because the brown rot just got to this thing again. I thought because since I took my um, plums out in the back that we really had a lot of brown rot that it wouldn't spread to this one. But I guess this variety is just super susceptible to the brown rot. So all that means is just next year I'm gonna have to spray them with the sulfur before the, the blooms actually open up. So that's not too big of a deal. Although since the tree has gotten big, it's gonna make it a little harder. Over here though, this is the other side of the story. This is why I preach so much about disease resistance varieties and getting bare root trees and getting the right trees the first time because this cherry tree is absolutely loaded. Look at this. I mean, it's gonna have too much fruit. And that's because this is a more of a disease resistant variety. This is also, this is the gold cherry. So it's also yellow too. So it's gonna be uh, not as hardly attacked by birds. That's why that idea of avoiding the issues like getting good disease resistant trees is a lot easier than actually having to manage with the issues. So we're still gonna get some rainier cherries on here. I can see that there's like a number of them and they'll pop up as they get bigger. They'll show more and more but we're not getting as many as last year and not getting as many as we should. But we're always learning and then adapting and changing. Here's a beautiful example of getting a good variety. And this is a, an apple tree that's a good disease resistant variety. And as you come in close, you'll notice that we've been doing a good job of, of uh, thinning this one. So there's not as many apples and they're coated with this kaolin clay that's just going to protect them. This way the plum curculio doesn't uh, steal too much of our harvest but it looks like it's going to be a good year for apples and an insane year for blueberries. That's why diversity is so important because maybe that cherry tree isn't doing great or a different kind of fruit isn't doing great, but it always seems like when it's a bad year for something, it's an incredible year for something else, like the blueberries. Here, here's a couple of blueberries, uh, plants that are just getting going. These aren't even my really healthy looking ones. These are ones that I just put in a couple of years ago in this location. So they're looking decent, but they're not looking anything like the ones in the new food forest, which I gotta hop over there and show you what they look like now. Let's step into the new food forest now with our boy Tuck, just hanging out, watching over us. And this is a lot of the same kind of things, but a few different kinds of beds. One thing I wanna mention about this bed is going back to microclimate. This is the bed in my uh, garden that gets the most shade. So this is a lot of my shade loving plants. I put another one of the uh, purple bok choy in here, hoping that it doesn't flower as quickly because it gets less light. Then I got my lettuces and stuff, some celery. So um, don't just put things where you want to put them. Go out, watch, observe, and then put things that, put things in the location that they will grow best. So it's kind of like let nature guide you and tell you where to put stuff. Don't just come up with your home, own human understanding that, oh, I want that there. Let, let nature kind of guide you and then it makes it easier for you. Here we've got the Mary Jane peach. This thing has a lot of peaches on it too. I've been coming around spraying and thinning this one too, just to make sure that I get a, uh, you know, some amazing peaches instead of not getting really any. Thinning is really important when it comes to these fruit trees. Here we have the stra <laughs> strawberries. These things are starting to head towards their, oh man, this is, I don't even have words because I just love the strawberries so much. When people ask me, you know, new gardeners say, what should I grow? I say, get some fruits, get some fruits in the planted, but make sure you get strawberries in and blueberries in. Those are always my first suggestions because not only do they do relatively well with not a whole lot of work, but the taste, the flavor, it's completely, you, I mean, you can't compare it to the stuff in the store. It's tough to even call the strawberries in the store strawberries when you've had something like a organic grown shucks and strawberry fresh right off the thing. Ah, oh, it's so good. And come up, hop over here because I want to show you how many blueberries are going to be on these plants. You can see some of these already, already actually getting the blueberries on them. So this looks like a bumper bumper crop year for the blueberries. That's why uh, I've got a lot of them planted. So. Blueberries, strawberries, you can never plant too many of them because, you know, as many as plants I have, it's still hard to get them inside because they just taste that good, the actual fruit. Then we've got a new bed that we put in. This is another one of the birdies raised beds. This stuff is a little bit behind. Like I mentioned, it's been, it hasn't been the greatest spring for growing, to be honest. So we're just uh, trying to do our best with it, but we know the weather's gonna turn around. If you guys are in a scenario where you're having a little bit of trouble this year, don't get discouraged. Make sure you journal. That's, I'm doing a lot even more of that this year than I ever have. Journal, write down the issues you're having, the dates and everything. This way you can adjust next year accordingly. So not every year is gonna be the same. That's one of the 
probably most fun things about gardening. Like if it was if it was guaranteed to get everything every year, then you would lose that kind of mystery. And I don't think it would be, I don't think the strawberries would taste as good when you actually get them. And the garlic here is doing well. So what we do here is just pl plant this garlic. And then between every garlic is where I'll be planting my tomatoes. So in a few weeks, we'll have all, all of our tomatoes here. The garlic will be coming out it, soon after that. And then, uh, and then we'll be growing tomatoes. <laughs> so it's fun to have a lot of the strawberries and everything to snack on now while we're looking forward to a lot of the summer stuff too. Hey Tuck, you want a radish boy? I think I got some radishes over here. This is how we're doing a lot of our beds this year. We've got them all covered with this insect netting because not only is it keeping out plants like, I mean, bugs like the, uh, the cabbage white butterfly, but it's also reducing so much of the wind because again, the wind this year has been way worse than it ever has. So we're getting a decent amount of wind damage on some things. Some of our radishes are ready. We've got these little white icicles, cute little white icicle radishes ready to go. I'm sure my boss will eat this because he loves the root crops. One of his favorite things are the root crops. What's he going to do? Ho, 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 bite that end off, spit it out, and then he'll usually go for the, uh, the center more. He usually likes the centers. He doesn't like that tip at the end for some reason. Right, boy? So we'll let him snack on that. And notice in here, we've got our kales, more rounds of radishes, lettuces that are basically ready to go. And then we've got other lettuces staggered behind those. This way we have a continual harvest of lettuce. Instead of getting all of our lettuce all at once and having too much to eat, we want to just be staggering all those. Next, we've got our other fruit cheese. I want to just show you the apples, more of the same thing. Another apple over there, different varieties. But I want to show you some of the peaches over here. These are the peaches, I think, that are gonna show good production this year. I've got three more peaches going down a line. And come in and check, take a look at these. This is the one that I just got done thinning. This is what it should look like more, how we've got good spacing, you'll notice, between each peach. Because when these swell up and get large, we don't want them touching each other. That's what's gonna cause issues. So we've got good spacing between all of them. We've got them covered with the kaolin clay. And by following these little steps, I think we're gonna get a really nice harvest out of this. I think Tuck thinks the same thing. Right, boy? That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. This time of year is just, it's such an exciting time of year for me and Tuck because everything is just starting to come together. The weather is just starting to shift. All the plants are showing explosive growth in a short amount of time. And then all the fruit's starting to set up too. So it's just like, you know, early in the season, it's like you, you put all these seeds in, you plant all the stuff and you feel like you're gonna get nothing out of it. And then a couple weeks by, go, a couple weeks go by and it kind of just nothing happens. But then all of a sudden, you know, uh, there's like a, just a huge explosive in growth and then everything just starts to come together. And that's the time of year we're at right now. So it's just such a, we just love sharing it with you guys. So thanks for being here for a lot of it. Before we let you go though, want to mention to grab some of the merch down low, especially the spring merch here, because this is, we only have a couple days for this stuff left. So if you really want to grab a spring shirt, then get one soon. And me and Tuck, my boss right here, he's in the video a lot. He just loves being a part of it. But he and me, we both wanted to thank David Ivers for being a new channel member. Thanks for becoming a member and for contributing to what's going on here. Your contribution has a direct impact in the, on the plants we grow and the things we do. So we wanted to thank you for that. Make sure you guys do not forget to spam the hearts down low for the boss, for Tuck, the king, the garden master, the eater of radishes, the guardian of the garden. Yeah, he's pretty good. And when we talk about him, he knows it. He gets that little, that little, look how, look how happy he is. Nothing makes this guy happier than being out here. Sometimes I'm hanging out inside and he just comes, you know, trying to get me to go outside, trying to bait me to, to go outside and, and play with them and just enjoy the weather. We love being out here and we want just to remind you guys to enjoy the time you have out in the garden. Um, it's, you've got to have this kind of shift in mindset where it goes from, uh, I have to go plant something, I have to go do something, to I get to go do something. That made a big change for me and Tuck, so we want to thank you guys for just being along for the whole thing. We'll be back again in a little bit. James and Tuck, we...